Have you ever looked at a jaw-dropping 3D model online and thought, how the hell did they pull it off? Rhino for sure is a powerful tool, but one key element often decides if a model looks professional or amateur. And no, it's not about software, it's about something else, something deeper, something structural that we often overlook, but hold that thought, we'll get there. Now, if you're using Rhino for a while, you probably think precision is everything. And of course, if you designing mechanical parts which needs to fit together like a puzzle, then you're right. When you are in an early stage, for example, concept design, and you work on organic shapes or something which needs to be fluent, precision can be a real trap. Sub-D modeling offers a few advantages which would be really hard to achieve in NURBS models. For example, editability. If used correctly, if you set up your model correctly, and if your boss or you change your mind, it's no problem to adjust it. Philip, um, can you please fix the model now? Smoothing. Smoothing is really difficult in NURBS modeling. There may be ways to do in Grasshopper or in Mesh modeling. In Sub-D modeling is just so much better. Deformation. That's probably less relevant if you're coming from architecture design or industrial design. But if you, for example, create a, a gear handle with a leather cover which can be deformed, then you better know how to set up your model correctly so it can be deformed in a way it looks realistic. The same is true for rendering with sub-D models. Sub-D models, because they are, if they are organized, they allow for much better mapping so your rendering and the texture on your object looks much more realistic. But how does it all work and why should you care? How can I do all this? Let's talk precision again. NURBS, NURBS are the gold standard for precision. Think of, for example, the glass house by Hedwig Studio, where the glass, where the glass crown needs to close perfectly on top. It was made to look simple, but it's actually a very complex uh, movement. Precision can be a double-edged sword. As your model becomes more complex, working in NURBS can make your model feeling like warding through a swamp. It's slow and it's tedious and hell. When you're modeling something like topographic environment or a human body, a face, a roof which is organic, then SubD is really the, the tool to choose. Rhino has been always a beast, but it always missed something crucial. And the way you, for example, model in Maya, in 3D Max or Blender is very, very different, but it, it allows for very organic kind of modeling style. A few years back, there was even third-party plugins like T-Splines to overcome the, the problem of NURBS, model, of NURBS modeling, which was really like an early version of the Sub-D models, of, of the Sub-D modeling. And I'm absolutely grateful that this, this is now implemented. And sure, mesh modeling and grasshopper have their place, no question. But sub-D was really the missing link between NURBS modeling, mesh modeling and grasshopper. Now, before we can jump into sub-D modeling, let's understand the problems further. So here's the thing. NURBS really have their quirks when you, for example, try to smooth a surface. You can do it, but it feels like it takes forever and it will never look great and then precision is gone whatsoever. Deforming NURBS models is another problem. It, there are things like bending, but it never really does what you really want. And now we, I think we're getting to the crux of the matter. There's one key element, key aspect, 
which is the most important in sub D modeling. And yes, of course, you need to learn all the tools first, creating sub D surfaces, creating basic sub D solids, understanding what creases are, inserting edge rings and edge loops, and what does that actually mean? What are edge loops? Append sub D surfaces. Bridge meshes and sub Ds. What does it mean to subdivide a sub D? Edge loops, sliding edges and edge loops, what does that mean as well? How can you select much more efficient? But there's one thing which is, the, is even more important. You see, the answer is topology. Topology is the secret sauce. Topology is the secret sauce. Topology is the secret sauce for a successful model. It makes your model easy to edit, to smooth, make it efficient for any kind of applications. But what does it mean a good topology? In the next video, we will go much deeper into that, but I will give you an overview what that means. There are certain rules you better follow if you start out with sub D modeling. First, try to avoid triangulation. Triangular faces sometimes cannot be avoided and sometimes they're okay, but they should be used really when there's no other way. Stick to quads. Quads are your best friend in sub D modeling. Avoid N-Gons. N-Gons I would only use in areas which I will not touch anymore. Otherwise, you can always break it down into quads. So what was the takeaway? A good topology means a model is easy, editable, not edible, faster anim animation, control, control over your of of the bigger portions of your model and the smaller details consistency the, the one thing which which really makes a good sub d model is topology topology is the secret sauce if you can't organize your model it will be the same hell as if you would try to map a texture onto a nerbs model understand what you want to model and work with the, the direction of the geometry. For example, if you model a face, think of where you have loops which close off certain areas, like the eye, for example. The eye is an opening, it has a, it's a loop, basically. The nose, the nostril is a loop, the mouth is a loop. You need to think, you need to understand what you model and you need to be sure of what you want to model and how. We will go into loops in much more depth in the next upcoming videos. But this just should give you an overview. So sub D is your go-to for organic shapes and mastering topology is key. It's key to unlock its full potential. Next time when you model in Rhino, remember precision is great, but it's the structure underneath which really makes your model shine. Happy modeling. Psst, a last tip. There's a great website. It's called topologyguides.com. I would check it out. It tells you everything about topology you need to know. It's, it's created with uh, Blender, created with Blender in mind, but it works exactly the same for sub D modeling in Rhino. All right, ciao. Philip, um, can you please fix the model now?